Dr. Benoît Guénard, and I'm an associate professor within the School of Biological Science at the University of Hong Kong, and I am also the director of the Hong Kong Biodiversity Museum. So currently, we are actually within the museum where uh, most of our specimens are being displayed uh, for the public to come and enjoy. So the collection that actually is around me, uh, a lot of the specimens have been collected uh, many decades ago. Actually, some of the older specimens for which we know the date of collection have been collected from 1923, so uh, almost 100 years ago, 100 years old. Um, but that collection was mainly used probably for many decades uh, for teaching, for, of course, tertiary education, so at the University of Hong Kong, for students studying zoology. When I joined HKU in 2014, this collection was um, not so used anymore, unfortunately, and my understanding is that it had never been open to the public. I just took the initiative uh, with some of my colleagues to actually uh, gather a number of specimens that were widespread at the time uh, within the building and put them all within this room, but also develop the collection by adding new specimens, and in particular specimens that were created for different research programs that have been conducted here in Hong Kong and also in other parts of Asia. So altogether, once we had uh, this uh, collection that existed, we decided to move forward and make it accessible to the public, which is what we have been doing now since the 22nd of May of this year, and uh, we hope it will remain this way for uh, many years to come. It's actually very much uh, uh, imbricated together um, because we need citizens to actually help us to monitor the diversity of Hong Kong. Hong Kong has a chance to be in a subtropical region which has an incredible diversity of species, many of which we actually don't even know live here because they have not been catalogued there or some of them have not been described. And there are many citizens uh, that actually uh, around the city who have a particular expertise or who might be keen to actually develop a new expertise um, in a particular group of organisms. I think a museum is a perfect place to actually provide collections for people to come and study and learn and maybe even deposit their own collections so we can all learn and all appreciate together the extents uh, of the biodiversity of Hong Kong but also to train the new generation. Uh, when we get students uh, coming, or even sometimes people who did not take necessarily an academic field in biology, but wants to go back and have a new hobby or a new experience in their life, museums should be here to actually provide the kind of guidance and the kind of support that people need uh, to develop this new kind of uh, expertise. So, Another, another thing that museums are very important is that they can actually uh, the real engine by uh, developing different programs in research. Once we have a team that is uh, working permanently here, we can start developing particular actions, bioblitz, but also citizen science program that we can basically help people or help some group they develop. So museums can really have this kind of, um, uh, I would say, central part uh, in our knowledge of biodiversity in Hong Kong through all kinds of different actors across the society.